So at the moment, we've been working with the inverse tree functions. And just yesterday, we developed the derivatives for these guys. Remember that? So where we're going to begin this time, now that we've got it up our sleeves, we are going to go back to our normal order for things, do sine, cos, and tan. If you do the derivative of sine inverse, We had to do some fancy stuff with knowing if you've got a function, what the derivative of its inverse is, so that dy dx, dx on dy business, okay? We also had to know the Pythagorean identity, and we had to be careful with this. Do you remember this? <laughs> we used this fact. We used this fact, but uh, we had to be careful with it because that equation that I just wrote on the board is not always true. It's only true sometimes. What was the domain we were interested in? For this particular one, do you remember? From from negative pi on two to pi on two, cos x is positive. That part of the graph, right? This is the part of the graph that um, we're referring to. Okay, so look, it's all above the axis, so except for these bits. So that's why we can say this. By the way, there's a great little um, there's a great little paradox you can trick people with if um, you sort of look at this and you can sort of do that with the Pythagorean identity just without knowing much about it. And then if you put in a value outside that domain, you can very easily show like, oh, negative one and one are the same. How did that work, right? So little easy ways to treat people when they forget, hey, domain really matters, okay? It's a really easy place for extension one students to show they understand things better than in two unit where domain restrictions never come up as nearly as frequently as in extension one. Okay, so that's what we did. What was the derivative we got out the other end? Do you remember? One on, square root of one, take away x squared. Very good. Now, before we move off this guy, um, I did mention to you, I'm going to turn on the projector because I'll need it shortly. It's okay. Um, I did mention to you that these results, these inverse tree derivatives and so on, they're on your reference sheet. However, this, what I just wrote, is not on the reference sheet. So something else is written there, and we're going to get to there, okay? So firstly, when you have a look at this, one of the easiest extensions of this is, well, chain rule, okay? What happens when you say, not the derivative of this guy, but the derivative of any kind of function in here, okay? So an easy example of what you might put in there, is this, okay? This is like a very, very simple example. Um, when we were doing a uh, chain rule for just polynomials raised to a power, uh, putting ax plus b in there was a very common sort of thing. What happens when we do this? What happens? Let's just look at this as a simple case. I'm going to do the derivative of the inside, then I'm going to do the derivative of the outside. Okay. So in this case, good one. It's an easy derivative on the inside, right? What is it? A. It's just a, right? So instead of a one being on the top, I would write an a on the top. When you go to the denominator, you've got to be careful. A very easy thing to forget is, oh, it's, it's the square root of 1 minus x squared is always that, but I don't have an x here, right? So this thing here is ax all squared. That whole function is being squared. Whatever's in there is being squared. So I really will have 1 take away a squared x squared underneath the square root. Now this is true. It's not very neat or elegant. It's, not, it's certainly not more... Um, not more useful than the previous result. It's very easy to get out there. It's not the result that comes up that appears on your reference sheet. With a bit of modification, this is the one that you get. Can you see, when well, you've got this A at the top here, it never interacts with this. Nothing happens to sort of put that together. There's nothing, like that's as simple as it gets. Do you agree? However, if you were to say instead of multiplying by this constant, A, if that was our coefficient, if you were to divide, something a little more interesting happens. Okay, So let's work through this. Again, the derivative of the inside and then the derivative of the outside. The derivative of the inside function in this case is 1 on 8. So that goes up on the numerator. When you have a look at your denominator, again, it's the square root of 1 take away this whole thing gets squared. Yeah, <clears throat> So that's x squared divided by a squared. Come here. Take a seat. So you can see here I can do something further here and it will be sort of useful, to you, right? This over here, this one on a, is really an a on the denominator. Do you agree with that? Like having a fraction on the numerator is really multiplying on the denominator. Okay. 
But this a outside of the square root, I can bring it inside the square root. Do you see that? When the a moves from the outside to the inside, it becomes um, a squared. Right? So if I restore that 1 on the top, and I multiply through everything underneath the square root by a squared, then you get this. That's kind of nice. That's kind of neat and, um, and concise. It's almost as elegant as this. You can kind of see this is the special case where a is equal to 1. Do you see that? 1, a, one, a squared, they're the same thing. Okay. So this result here is almost the one that you see on your reference sheet. Okay, with one difference, most of the things that most of the calculus results you see on your reference sheet are not actually in this differentiated that gives you that, but they give it to you the other way around. Because we know every statement about a derivative, if you look at it from the other direction, is a statement about integration, right? So that's why my heading here was, was calculus with inverse tree functions, because it's not just differentiation we're working with. Now we're always thinking about if I know something about differentiation, I also know something about integration. So, right alongside here, what integration statement would I make out of this line? I can't just write it straight away. What would I, what would I write? The integral of... Integral of... of yep. Yeah. This guy in the heat, very good. And I'm integrating with respect to... X. X. So I'm going to check out the X thing. Equals what? X on A plus sine X. Inverse sine, inverse sine, sine inverse. Plus, plus my constant. Very good. Okay. Now this is what you see. This is the result that's on the reference sheet. However, before we go any further, I just want to point something interesting here. Right? You notice sine inverse x of a, x on a, and there's a constant of integration. So that means I can move this thing up and down. Okay. One of the curious things. This is why I um, uh, I'm going to need some cables. Actually. Can someone give me a hand? There's a black cable down there. And I want to show you the reference sheet here for a second. <clears throat> Thank you. Ta. Um, one of the things that's interesting is we can go through this same process. And in fact, as I'm doing this, I'd like you to, I would like you to go through the same process. We can go this, through this exact same process to develop a, a statement just like this for tan inverse. Do you agree? It ends up looking a little bit different. Start it off, it only takes a few lines. You know what the derivative is. Try this case again. What happens when you divide through by a? Again, something sort of nice and neat happens. A little bit different. Give it a shot. When you do that, good morning, it's not complicated. The maths of it is not complicated. But then it seems like something is missing on the reference sheet. So I want you to have a go at the tan inverse one and then I will show you what is missing. <coughs> 